All right, so we're back for part two. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and continue the game. So if you recall, last time we had just purchased the outer system travel permit, which allows us to travel to the asteroids, which in this case is a, a refinery in the asteroids, uh, as well as Jupiter and Saturn. Um, we were thinking about buying a new ship. So this is a pretty late game ship. Uh, I was thinking about buying the Triton Orbitals ship, um, but the issue was that I need to make an $80,000 down payment, and then that doesn't leave me with enough money to fill up the cargo hold, so it'd be kind of a waste. Uh, I'm currently renting a Demosian XJ28. I'd like my next ship to be something that I buy, so I don't have to rent it anymore. Um, but I think I'm going to hold on to it for a couple more runs until I have a little bit more money saved up. So Earth produces... Uh, let's see. So Earth produces fresh food. Yes. Shipments of fresh food from the surface are readily available. So Earth produces fresh food and wants nanoprocessors. So right now I can go to Saturn, which wants fresh food and then bring back nanoprocessors. I know that this isn't the most lucrative trade route even though it looks like it might be but uh, it'll be a pretty solid way to make sure that I don't actually lose any money. Once I go into debt it can get really hard to get out. Okay so I'm stocked up on fresh food. I can see here that my cargo hold is full up. Now I'm going to go to Saturn. It's going to take nine months. It's taken a lot longer than before. The Newswire covers a story about the 777 Taurus's lottery prize pool. All right, so I can spend $1,000 to buy a ticket, or I can ignore it. Uh, maybe later in the game when $1,000 is less money to me. Yeah, so I don't buy a ticket. We are in deep space. Almost there. All right, so cost us $23,000 to operate the ship for all that time in deep space. And it uh, looks like our, the stock market has not been doing too well either. Okay, so here we are at Saturn. Uh, let's sell this fresh food. Pretty solid. So I can see here that I paid an average of uh, $40 a kilogram and I'm selling it at more than twice that, at 101 per kilogram. So great, I made a $54,000. I'm going to do one more run back. So I'm going to buy the nanoprocessors. I'm going to take these back to Earth. Buying them at 24. Earth is five months away now. Not too bad. All right. Okay, stock market's rebounded. I see that I've made 6,300. Okay, let's go visit the moon goods market. $40,000. Okay. I'm liking where we are right now. So uh, I was looking at buying this Triton Orbitals ship here. Uh, the down payment's going to be $79,000. Uh, interest rate's 5% a year, which is like, it's, I've seen it lower. It was about 3.5% 3, 3 when we looked last time, but I don't know if I want to rate around anymore. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and buy this ship. So I'm going to be putting down uh, $79,000 on it and taking out a loan for $316,000. I'll be making monthly payments of $2,500. So when I'm renting the ship like I am now, I, I just sort of lose the money. But at least this way, um, a fairly high percentage of that, the monthly payment will go into equity for the ship. Okay, here's my new ship. Triton Orbitals Galley. I've owned the ship for one month, and I can see here that uh, my mortgage is $2,500 a month, and then there's a few other expenses like insurance and very ship upkeep that's costing me about $550 a month. So the ship hold is only a little bit bigger than before. It's $1,100 versus $900, but um, that extra $200 is pretty solid. So here I can see I'm clicking on mortgage details here. So this allows me to see uh, the details of paying off my mortgage. So uh, I include the entire mortgage payoff schedule here. But so I can see for the first month, yeah, I, I'm paying about $1,300 in interest, but about $1,200 of the money that I'm paying is going into the equity in my ship. So I get to keep that. And when I get to sell it and get a bigger ship, uh, I, I have access to that money again. 
So I have 180 months left on the mortgage. The um, I'll look at it right now. So when I when I get these the 15 month mortgage, uh, yeah, the payments are a little higher, but overall I will end up spending less money because I'm paying uh, less interest. Okay. So now that I have this trite orbital ship, here I am at Earth. Um, I want to go to Mars and do that that med gel run again. So I'm just gonna I'm gonna see see if Mars has any just, uh, need for well. Hmm. I'm gonna buy some fresh food here. Um, and then I'm gonna buy some spices here. So uh, I'm doing this because I know that Earth makes really cheap fresh food. I don't know if Mars really has a high demand for it, um, but I do know that Mars has a high demand for spices. So uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna hedge my risk a little bit by taking a few different types of trade goods over to Mars, since I don't know exactly what's gonna work out this time. So here we go, only three months. Okay, recurring expenses of 10,000, but I made it all back in the stock market, which is pretty good. Let's check that out. So I can see here that market conditions are very good again. There was this drop off a few, uh, about a year ago, but uh, things have recovered pretty nicely. I want to maybe buy some more stocks. Let's put a few more, a few thousand dollars more in there. Okay, so let's go over to the goods market and see how our fresh food is going to fare. Oh, whoops. Okay, so I can scroll down here and I'm going to sell uh, 572 kilograms at 58. How much did I buy it for? I bought it for 38. It's pretty pretty solid, making about twelve thousand dollars here. So I look at spices here. If I sell all my spices, I'm making, we got $7,000. So I paid 90 per kilogram and I'm selling at 115 per kilogram. So not too bad. Uh, I am really here to do this med gel run again because that has been really consistent. So the price of med gel is a little higher than it was last time I came here. Um, I'm still gonna risk it. So cargo hold right now, completely full of med gel. Uh, those Venusian uh, algae farmers definitely need it. Okay, lost a little bit of money in transit, but that's to be expected. All right, so up to 1,100 kilograms for each, each one of these runs. Okay, so I'm selling it for almost double what I bought it here. This is great. Back up to 114K liquid cash. I'm starting to think maybe I should uh, should look at these permits for the outer system. Um, so, so right now I, I don't have access to Uranus, Neptune, or uh, Pluto. Oops, and I want to see if there's any like particularly lucrative trade routes I can get. So I keep seeing these uh, notifications at the top. There's a commodity shortage of nanoprocessors in Pluto. A lot of these things will cover. Um, bodies in the solar system that I don't have access to yet but if I if I get the permits I'll be able to so I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and buy but the next travel permit I'm not gonna buy the extra system one I'm gonna buy the outer system travel permit too so this will allow me to travel to Uranus and Neptune so if I go over here to the uh, trade intelligence page scroll down to the new section Uranus and Neptune I can see that Uranus imports spices which is like uh, Mars does and exports hydrogen and uh, Neptune imports aluminum and uh, exports med gel and hydrogen. So let me think about if I can come up with a reasonably good trade route here. If I go from the asteroids, so asteroids produce aluminum. I take it to Neptune Tridonopolis, which imports aluminum, and then pick up med gel. I'll have to see where the planets are. I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna do that first, though. I'm gonna I'm gonna to go to the the Astro Belt Central Refinery, Central Refinery, and buy some aluminum. So it imports hydrogen. I'm just gonna buy some hydrogen uh, right now. And then I'm gonna fly over to the uh, Astro Belt Central Refinery. An unknown ship is on an intercept course. So last time I accelerated away. This time I'm going to roll the dice. The ship is another trading vessel. Its comms and life support systems are damaged beyond repair. 
The pilot wires me $20,000 for a ride back to the settlement. That's pretty good. I'm glad that I did that. All right, we're almost to the asteroid belt. Recurring expenses and our unexpected income sort of uh, negate each other. It's pretty nice. Okay, here I'm at the asteroid belt central refinery. This refinery is the oldest major station in the system, and nearly all human mining ships bring their ore here. The on-station market is usually well stocked with freshly refined aluminum. Hydrogen is in demand as a fuel for large-scale mining equipment. Okay, great. So I have a bunch of hydrogen on me. Uh, I'm making making fifteen thousand, but I know that I spent more than that just to fly here. That's not really fantastic. Okay, there's still the shortage of nanoprocessors at Pluto, but I just can't do anything about that right now. So I was going to buy uh, aluminum, since the central refinery produces a lot of aluminum. And then I remember reading that Neptune, which is 17 months away. Oh, I don't know if I want to do that. 17 months is gonna gonna cost me a lot of money. I'm gonna I'm gonna do it anyways. Uh, I think that the demand on Tritonopolis might be high enough to make this 17 month journey worthwhile. Also, I do just want to go visit Neptune since I just bought my permit. My ship's AI has disabled the main airlock. Oh, there's a typo there. You ask it to open the door, but it just keeps telling you that it can't do that. You can open the computer core and try to sort things out or unplug the AI completely and continue to my destination. Um, I'm going to open the computer core. I enter the computer core and carefully disable AI modules. The computer slowly sings a nursery rhyme as it's shutting down. You reboot the system and everything seems to be working again. Great. This is a long one. Only one, one year left till we get to Neptune. So. Tritonopolis is a, a large uh, is a large colony that is on Neptune's moon Triton. We'll get to see it in a sec. Okay, so my occurring expenses were fifty-two thousand dollars here. And now I have a, quite a bit of debt. Uh, at least my stocks have continued to do well. So if I am really having issues, I can sell those. So here we are, Neptune Tritonopolis. The, far, the farthest major settlement from the sun, Tritonopolis, is home to huge shipyards that use a lot of aluminum. Martian expats have relocated here and export modest amounts of med gel. So here we can see, here's the planet coming in the background. Here's Neptune, a few other uh, Neptunian moons floating along. And then on the surface of Tritonopolis, or on the surface of Triton, we see Tritonopolis, huge circular civilization. All right, let's head to the goods market. Aluminum. All right. Ah, oh, not fantastic. So, looks like I'm making a profit here, but um, my recurring expenses on this trip were, were over $50,000, so I'm actually losing money. This was not necessarily worth it. At least I'm no longer in debt. Okay, so what do they, what do, they do here? So they import aluminum and they export med gel. So, I guess I'm going to buy med gel, and then I'm going to go back to Venus, 12 months. Hmm. Nothing's really very close. Alright, I'm going to go back to Venus. One year in deep space. Let's see if anything interesting happens here. I'd really like to uh, to move up to a bigger ship pretty soon. I've had this one for a few years now. So recurring expenses, 36,000. Stock market has been doing well, but uh, I'm running low on a little cash too. So here's the med gel, sell it for pretty good profit. So that ended up being, being pretty worthwhile. I saw that there was a surplus of nanoprocessors somewhere. There's a surplus of fresh food now at Tartarus. So that's also a Tartarus, man. I really need to get on buying that uh, extra system travel permit. How much is it? 75,000? I'm gonna hold off on that again. So I've owned this ship for 42 months now. I'm still paying that mortgage every month, but uh, 
now I have a fair amount of equity. So I have $131,000 of equity in this ship now, which is really great. So if I wanna, wanna make a payment on another ship, I can apply the, uh, the equity I've earned in this ship towards buying a next ship, which will make my life a lot easier. I don't have to actually save up the cash in order to do it. Um, nothing too sexy here. I'm gonna hold on to this. Where haven't we been? We haven't been to, we haven't been to Jupiter. It's only six months away. Jupiter imports algae, so that that would make sense for us to go there. It imports algae, exports mesoscale chips and fresh food. Okay, we'll stock up on algae here, and then we're gonna fly to Jupiter. Just completely fill up the cargo hold with algae. Only six months to Jupiter. So the ship's AI has disabled the airlock again. This thing is a problem. So um, this time I'm gonna unplug the AI. Only $500 to fix it, not a huge deal. So recurring expenses, $20,000. Some unexpected expenses, but um, nothing too crazy here. Let's take a look at Jupiter. Okay. So here is Jupiter's Grand Central Ring. Jupiter's moons support a massive population, but most locals can't afford fresh food, instead relying on algae for sustenance. Jupiter's strong magnetic field makes mesoscale chip production very cheap. So we can see here, we have Jupiter and uh, some of our moons sliding into the background. But let's get down to business again here. So let's head to the goods market. We have algae selling at 72 per kilogram, which is more than twice what we bought it at, so $46,000 profit here. Pretty solid. We're up to 127K in liquid assets. I'm thinking about maybe upgrading my ship again. So here's the galleys for sale here. The sail tech is for sale here. Sail tech modern one is a unique vessel that relies on a giant photon sail for propulsion. It seems big, but it only contains a mid-sized cargo hold. I think I'd like to upgrade to the Series A, this Ganymede Series A. So these are the Ganymede chips are ships that you can only buy locally at Saturn. All right, uh, Jupiter. The Series A is the smallest ship produced on Ganymede, but by most standards, it's still a beast. Its rotating hab ring makes even the longest trips bearable. So it'll be nice. Uh, let's see what the down payment is. So the down payment is... 139,000. So I actually have enough equity in my current chip to make the down payment on this ship. And I'll still have over $100,000 left. Okay, I'm going to do that. Here we have the Series A, owned the ship for one month, brand spanking new. Still have 127k in cash. All right, this is great. So mesoscale chips. I think that those are fairly high demand everywhere, but there's nowhere that really specifically imports mesoscale chips. Let me double check that. So, oh, I've been completely ignoring Mercury. They export nanoprocessors. I could have been uh, taking those to Earth. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll go do a run like that next time I'm back in the inner system. Yeah, so mesoscale chips, Nowhere really needs them, but everywhere everywhere will buy them. Um, where's the closest place? So it's only gonna take me five months to get to Mercury. I think I'd like to go to Mercury, sell some mesoscale chips, pick up some nanoprocessors, and then go back to Earth. So I'm gonna buy mesoscale chips here. I'm only gonna fill up the cargo hold about halfway. No. I'm not gonna be able to afford to fill it up completely. And then what else do they want on Mercury, is that it? Mercury wants hydrogen. Okay, we'll also pick up some hydrogen and bring that over. So you can see over here, now our uh, our total inventory value is $100,000. Uh, it's made up of hydrogen and mesoscale chips and we have almost 2,000 kilograms in our cargo hole. So we're making really good progress here. So we'll fly over to Mercury. It's a pretty, sh pretty short journey, only 
five months. Our uh, expenses are going to be a lot higher than before. Yeah, 26,000. Just because this is a bigger ship, it costs a lot more to, to keep going. Here are Mercury. Mercury Dark Side Station. This station requires tremendous amounts of hydrogen fuel to stay well within Mercury's shadow. Its small population produces few exports, but some nanoprocessor fabricators sell their surplus production at good prices. So we're going to go ahead and buy nanoprocessors. So we'll sell our hydrogen. Wow, that actually has worked out pretty well. So we'll make a $50,000 profit on our hydrogen, oh, not food. And then we're going to sell our mesoscale chips, not really make any profit. That wasn't, that, that, that gamble didn't work out very well. Uh, what kind of ships do they have here? I'm not going to buy another ship right now. Uh, they have a tiny little ship market, only two ships available. So we're going to go buy those nanoprocessors that they produce here. We can buy $73,000 worth. So we have, we have a fair amount of money left uh, just sitting around doing nothing. So I'll, I'll buy some cash, or I'll buy some stocks with some cash, and I'll buy some bonds. I'm going to buy $10,000 worth of bonds too. So now I can see that I have, I have quite a bit of cash, quite a bit of uh, stocks and bonds as well. Let's fly over to Earth, sell these nanoprocessors. Okay, $20,000 costing us just to run this ship. Uh, so we need to make more than $20,000 for this trip to be worth it. Let's see how it goes. Selling our nanoprocessors. Uh, we bought them at 37, we're selling them at 64. So yeah, come on ahead, this is great. All right, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave this uh, section here for now. But looking forward, I'd really like to buy these extra system travel permit and, and get one of the big ships, one of the ones, million plus dollars, but huge cargo holds. So thanks and uh, tune in next time.